Hi, my loves. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I really hope that you are having a beautiful and an amazing day. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you for all of your love and support. I really appreciate it. This is a timeless collective reading for the sign of Sagittarius. Seven of Wands and the Ace of Swords is here. Yeah. It's how exactly do you show up? How do you communicate your authentic truth when in the face of adversity? How determined are you? How resistant to change have you been? Or will you be moving forward? So let's just see what the cards say. It's just food for thought. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Bottom of the deck is a magician card. Manifestation. Yeah. Manifestation. Six of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles. Ace of Swords. Wow. Three of Cups. Nine of Swords. Ace of Cups. The Star. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, I don't know what made me... I just pull these cards like this, but it's eight cards. There is a major shift and change that happened this month in the month of August. As we shift out of August and into nine, the ninth month, um, September, there's a lot that's about to happen. Okay. I feel like a lot of people right now are manifesting, like I said, new friendships, new relationships. Um, you're connecting with your soul family. You're going into new communities, but obviously to go into new things, even like with the magician card, that means that most likely you're coming out of something. Usually people get really serious about manifestation um, because they feel like they need to prepare for something and they have to get themselves um, empowered because they've been through something perhaps that could have been tragic or even traumatic that's now showing you that like okay you need to prepare for the next thing then you have the six of pentacles and the nine of swords with the six of pentacles nine of swords at this time because pisces is a water sign and it's so much um psychic intuitive energy that's in the collective many of you need to be very careful because where your energy goes like your time, effort, and energy is so is so key right now because with the nine of swords, I feel like everyone right now is like an emotional sponge. If somebody thinks about you, you feel it. If somebody dreams about you, you feel it. Some people, you see it. Depending on how sharp your spiritual eye is, you can sense practically everything that's happening. And if you are too generous with your time, effort, your energy, and your attention, you will find yourself dealing with a lot of the stress, fear, worry, and, and the anxiety of everyone else that is in your environment. A lot of people's spiritual gifts and or psychic gifts, talents, and abilities are heightened right now. You have the Knight of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups. This is you needing to be very responsible when it comes to your own energy and i feel like this is and i've been talking about this for several weeks now it's so important for you to i don't want to say hold on to all of your energy because your energy is meant to be shared with those who are like-minded and aligned but you have to learn to be very selective with your energy. And that's why the Ace of Cups is here. This is about self-love and awareness. Who exactly are you allowing yourself to be responsible for? Because a lot of people now with the, this light this that you have, you're drawing all kind of energies and spirits in. So you have to make sure that you have the discipline and the structure to be responsible enough for yourself and your well-being and your future that you don't just go giving all of this love and this emotional um, like energy that you have to the wrong people. The Ace of Swords is here and the Star. Some of you, you're very inspirational. 
or you're on your way to being very inspirational to a lot of people. But it's like you're going into a season of a lot of wish fulfillment. But it also requires so much faith because moving into this new era in your life, we can say you've never seen it before. You you don't know exactly what it's supposed to feel like. So there's this unraveling, this undoing of conditioning that has caused you to have the self-limiting or outdated beliefs. Like I said, for myself, it's even been a challenge where it's like, you will see peace and like when there is no conflict or chaos, you're like, I'm bored. Going into a season where you don't have so many problems to solve is going to be triggering for a lot of people because the problem that you have not solved is the fact that you always want to solve problems. So now that all of these different situations are sort of energetically being resolved on a energetic cosmic level on a personal level that means now that you have to solve your biggest problem and that's that's self and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong it's just when regaining your own personal power and ability to manifest do you know how i keep saying this do you know how to use your own magic wand because so many people in their karmic cycles, South Node energy, have been accustomed to just giving, giving, giving. To now act from a place of self-love and awareness and wholeness, wellness, to hold back energy, it feels like it's a real struggle. Because it's like... Everything about the way you process information, the way that you perceive people, places, things, and situations is shifting and changing. How you even see karma is going to change. There is no good or bad. It's simply, is it aligned or not? The King of Wands. Heavy fire energy here. The strength card and the queen of wands. Is somebody manifesting a partnership? I feel like someone is finally having the strength and the courage to for sure manifest a partnership. This is manifesting a partnership with somebody, though, who, like I said, they're a part of the same soul family or community as you. And even this is going to be very different for a lot of people to get out of our, quote unquote, karmic relationships and to go into the divine partnerships. Many people and I've been trying to talk about this in the readings as spiritual guidance. You have no idea what you're about to really face going into these soulmate twin flame connections. There's this huge misconception that this divine being is going to come in your life and they're going to be perfect and you're just going to run off in the sunset. No. This person or this connection will come in with its own obstacles and challenges too. But they're the obstacles and challenges that will inspire you to have faith, courage, compassion. Because you will be forced to act with emotional intelligence, which is most likely what you lacked in the past. And I just noticed we have 11 and 1 here, 1, 1, 1. Somebody could be a life path 1. Uh, master number 11 this this has everything to do with leadership some of you are for sure you're manifesting like this power couple divine like connection but you and this person are in the same community being in the same soul family does not mean that you have the exact same beliefs it doesn't mean that you have the same upbringing there is there's an alignment but see the the another misconception is you think that you and this person you come together aligned 
No, you align together. You began to align because of this connection. It's like first you you get yourself aligned with self and then you start to get aligned with another person. That That's a whole different kind of beast with the strength card here. <laughs> With the lion, it, it's taming a, a different beast. It's a person understanding that them being extremely courageous, they still have to have compassion because there's things that you and this person, you won't understand about each other because when you meet this type of person, you're going to realize that it's a lot that you still didn't understand about yourself. Everybody thinks that they're a great person, but being a great person doesn't make you a great partner. You have no idea who you are until you actually have a mirror in front of you. Something or someone that's unfamiliar, new, that makes you change your perspective. This is why diversity should be welcome. Okay, we have Justice, the Seven of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, okay, the Three of Wands, and the Moon. And here is the wheel. So we have three, three, three. Three of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Three of Wands, King and Queen of Wands. So something here is being aligned, like mind, body, spirit. Spirit, body, soul. Something is being aligned. August 18th could have been significant. Something here, though, is confusing still. It's going to move forward, but somebody has to see that they're confused. This confusion is, is being swept away, though. Some of this confusion could come from magic, black magic. But I'm getting more so someone here is very confused by what they're manifesting. Because I feel that what you or another person are manifesting, which may bring you and someone together, whether it's in a, a personal relationship, platonic, business, romantic, or, or whatever, with the seven of cups, it leads to a lot of overanalyzing because there is some type of illusion here. But this illusion comes really from someone not fully trusting their intuition. There's a powerful revelation here of somebody realizing that something is not what they thought and then something is exactly what they thought. And... It seems like it's overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> the will and then judgment. There's a huge change here. But somebody in how you evaluate self and success is changing. Seven of swords here. That's awareness. There's some kind of self-deceit and self-sabotage like energy. Yeah. And here's the devil right behind it and the hermit. It's going to force somebody to go within and do some cleansing and clearing so that they can actually awaken for the four of wands. The four of wands could be this. This could be just a divine feminine and masculine don't have to know each other. This is just a collective of divine beings who are having the strength and the courage, though, to finally turn their new leaf. But there is for sure this awakening here where somebody is like, am I lying to myself or am I telling myself the truth about this? There's going to be some kind of epiphany or revelation that's going to come in, though, and it's bringing justice. And this could be you finding out that, yeah, you were wrong about something or someone. Or this, or somebody is realizing this about you. Take it however it resonates. It could be you were wrong about someone and they were wrong. What's happening is everyone is going through this awakening. 
So it seems almost like something that made you so upset, so worried, so weak, so weary. You just kind of wake up and you're like, hmm, it's not that bad. Or something that seemed just tumultuous, just tragic. You wake up and you're like, hmm, I'm so grateful for that. It, it, it's the perspective changes. Your perception, your perception of something being stressful or a burden. What this really is, is grace and gratitude because a hermit is here. This is going within and discovering like, wow, I'm so grateful for being overworked and the burden of my own ego or someone else's ego or I'm so, I'm grateful for their narcissistic situation. Like I said, like with Adam and Eve, it's kind of, it reminds me of like a narcissist empath paradigm because oftentimes you will have an empath that is curious about the life and the lifestyle of a narcissist because they're everything that you're not. And the narcissist is very curious about the empath because they're everything that that person is not. They swap energies. Well, I don't want to say they swap energies, but they swap experiences. Right? An empath will, who may be a little bit shy, very intuitive, the kind of person who introverted, they will go towards a loud mouth, egotistical, arrogant narcissist. And the life that the narcissist lives, it becomes exciting. You're drawn in by it and you, you get curious about it. Their curiosity is what leads most people down their rabbit hole, down their karmic path. It's not bad because who would you be if you didn't learn those things about people, about life, the world, and yourself? But I feel that you become free when you finally realize that it's really not as bad as you think it is. Whatever the situation is. Because the situation prepared you for, like I said, your sole purpose. It prepared you for the best season of your life, the best opportunity, the best partnership. It, it, it sets you up for the win. That's why I'm like, I don't want to minimize what anyone has gone through. Because trust, I mean, trust me, I've, the stuff that I read, I've, I've been through some of it too, for sure. But when you finally wake up and you're like, well, it just had to happen, kind of, a lot starts to shift. Truly, you will receive justice when you stop overanalyzing because what's happening is, It is um, analysis paralysis. Some people are analyzing situations so much, overanalyzing them, and it's keeping you stuck in fear. So it's, you're paralyzed by fear. Because when you get done analyzing the situation, all you see is the illusions. All you see is being trapped. All you can deal with is the sleepless nights, the worry, the negativity, the drama. It's an ongoing internal battle. I feel like spirit is coming in now with this full moon in Pisces and saying, cut, cleanse, and clear. You need a full reboot. Like you need a, a full reset of the things that are in your subconscious mind. When you reprogram how you perceive things that are still part of your subconscious mind, your reality will change. Transformation, yeah. <laughs> Transformation and the high priestess. And here's the five of pentacles and the four of cups. So yeah, your it will be wise for you at this time to realize that even in five of pentacles, even in the times when you've been worried, when you felt like you didn't have what you needed or what you wanted or you were isolated and alone, 
God never left you or for, or or forsake like forsake you. It was you being very self-absorbed with this whole idea that things are not working out. And and what I'm really getting from this is when people get tired of idolizing pain no, I'm sorry. A lot of people on your journey, you've idolized people because that person or their relationship or their job, you felt like it was going to give you a certain lifestyle or outcome that you at that time were very much invested in. Now, a lot of people are realizing that after so much time, effort, energy, and attention, in this thing that you were invested in, it was based on an illusion because now you're waking up to new ideas. You're manifesting a new reality. But there is this energy of being self-absorbed and discontent because you're constantly like, well, why isn't this working? Why isn't it work? And what's God is saying, well, it was never meant to work. It was just a part. And I had a reading like this about a week. I'm like, what if this whole karmic situation or the relationships, the family and all that? Really, it's just part of the design. It was all one big illusion. And it was designed to see the, the survival of the fittest. How long will you stay in this web of confusion and lies? Before you realize that there's a whole world out there. Before you realize that you're not really trapped. It's honestly a prison around your own mind because of a lack of healing of your inner child. And you haven't allowed yourself to reboot your subconscious mind. To reprogram it. This is when you have to have wisdom to see that like, okay, you've been abandoned. Maybe you've had financial difficulties. Um, maybe you've been distracted by certain people, places, things, or situations. But it allows you to go through a transformation. And with this transformation and this type of wisdom, it should bring about a lot of liberation. You should be able to free yourself now because... All the situations in your life have served its purpose, which was simply to bring you into this this place of enlightenment and awareness as this high priestess, high priest, divine feminine, divine masculine. I think I put in a com community post a few days ago, you can let the narrative control you or you can control the narrative. The narrative that, oh my goodness, I can't believe my friends and my family are so jealous and envious and they did all these awful things to me. That kind of puts you in a position of being the victim. Or you can say, wow, I'm so thankful for all those betrayals because look at how awesome I am now. The reason why it's difficult for people to get into this energy of being very optimistic and, and you're still overanalyzing though is because what you're manifesting, you can't see it, you can't touch it or feel it just yet. Some of you, it's so close, you, you can start to kind of see it. It's almost like people say, yeah, it's, it's so close, I can taste it. But until you have it in your hand, but it kind of goes back to like us believing in God. It's an energy. Can you discern and decipher when it comes to energy? There's a lot of things that you are manifesting that you can't see, touch, or feel until it's time for you to see, touch, or feel it. So this is a, a huge test of faith and a lesson in patience and utilizing real wisdom, like I said, in the face especially of adversity, do you lose hope and faith? And when you find that you cannot trust people or you even feel like you can't trust yourself, do you then begin to just idolize your pain? Because that's what we see in the collective oftentimes, especially here in tarot, um, in the tarot community. In the re it's it's an idol, an idolization of pain and suffering. 
We always talk about who's behind the scenes doing the black magic. Who's behind the scenes robbing, stealing, you know, on the live. Who, who's behind it? But at some point, what about when you realize like, oh, that's what they were designed. That's what they were here to do. That was their, that was their divine purpose. Just like your divine purpose is to walk in light. Some people, their purpose is to literally just be hell on earth. And when you see it for what it is, you recognize it and you realize that that was placed in your, your path for you to transform and liberate yourself from the situation. You can stop giving it so much energy and attention. Uh oh, I knew it was going to happen. The two of swords is here. One second. We had cards that fell. I have the king of pentacles. The eight of pentacles. The lovers. <laughs> the ten of pentacles. Page of swords. Six of swords. All right. So it's a breakthrough. Major breakthrough. To a brand new beginning. Okay. This is real simple. You really just need to allow this to happen. The two of swords is here. So again, this is... Someone being confused, feeling like you need to avoid a person, place, thing, or a situation, being very indecisive. But the page of pentacles is here. This is saying here that you need to be prepared because you are protected when it comes to you going into this brand new beginning with the fool card being here because you've already made a huge investment in the situation. So eight of swords, get out of your, your head and stop allowing this self-doubt and confusion to cause you to forget that you actually have free will. Like I said, there, there is no good or bad. It's, is it aligned with you or not? But to know what is aligned with you means that you must know thyself. You Do you know you at this point? Because most people have focused so much on how other people don't know you. Do you know you? Do you know where you're going? Are you just aimlessly wandering at this point? The king of pentacles is here. <clears throat> That's the one who's successful. They're generous. They're grounded. They're stable. And then you have the eight of pentacles and the ten of pentacles. So somebody out here with the lovers, the lovers does speak of a choice. Okay. Someone is about to have some kind of emotional breakthrough with the page of swords and the six of swords. Where they're going to see something clearly. Someone is assessing and evaluating what exactly are their true thoughts and beliefs about partnership, relationships. How exactly do you define success? Someone is working very hard right now. Either because they had a failed relationship or because they're trying to prepare for the, the most successful relationship of this lifetime. But this requires someone to be very honest and truthful with themselves about where, they're, where they've come from so that they know where they're going. But knowing where you come from doesn't mean that you have to replay the worst events of your life over and over. Take the wisdom from the situation and allow yourself to experience relief so that you can have hope and you can liberate yourself and move on. That's what this this clearing is. This is a huge cleansing and clearing, like I said, of the sub of the subconscious. A lot of healing of the inner child. Yeah, the son, the, the the inner child. What exactly have you been holding on to for the last decade that is stopping you from going towards love? It's stopping you from going towards a new career. Stopping you from building a business. It's stopping you from having new friends. It's stopping you from going out to date because the sun is here with the Ten of Cups. And here's the Ten of Pentacles. And we've been seeing 1010 like crazy. This is the end of a lot of difficult times in your life. But it's, it, it is your decision to make. To the Two of Wands. You have to plan and move forward. And here's the Ten of Swords. 10, 10, 10. We have three, three, three here in 10, 10, 10. Nine of cups. 
The Ace of Pentacles, wow, the Hierophant. Boy, I want to tell you, it, there are some marriages and some people stepping into their divine calling. For some of you, you are truly destined to be spiritual leaders, world overcomers. Your story is meant to inspire a lot of people. And that is the reason why you really have to define and like define and for some of you even brand yourself. You have to be very honest about your your life path and your journey. Some of you, your life path could definitely be number one. You're a natural born leader. But you have to be honest. And when you tell your story, people want to know about the victory. You can't only share the test and the trials and tribulations and not have a test. People are wondering, okay, how did you overcome the situation? I feel like I'm talking to a lot of people, especially like here on YouTube, on this platform and the way social media is now. You see everybody talking about their story, but they're only telling you all of the bad things that are happening. People want to know, how did you overcome it? What does your life look like now? I say it all the time, even like tarot. You see readers who are so gifted and you, you ask yourself when they turn off the camera, are you guys, are you living life? Are you dating? Are you married? Are you fulfilled in your friendships, your relationships? What is your connection like with God? Like when you get done sharing your story and you have all this wisdom, how much of your personal wisdom and testimony are you applying to your life that will allow you to be an inspiration to other people? And that's what this shift is about as we shift into your North Node your life purpose, your divine purpose. Like, what is your soul telling you to do at this point? Because you have to leave some kind of mark. So how you show up in the world and you tell your story is important. But if you speak from a tongue that refuses to forgive or refuses to let go of the past or the you know, you're still battling internally. It, that's going to show up in your your environment. There's a lot of external forces and factors that you can't control. So you absolutely have to be able to control yourself, your thoughts and your emotions. And with this Pisces full moon, high priestess energy, psychic intuitive energy, people who even have, you know, the gift of being a psychic or medium or whatever. If you don't know how to guard your heart and control your emotions, you will lose it. You will constantly be spazzing out. So for some of you, it's like, if you want to be responsible for more, you have to show that you can carry and you can manage what you have. Some of you, you have spiritual gifts that are trying to develop, but God is like, wait a minute, let me let me check your discernment first. Because let's let's be let's be honest. Even the people who are extremely wicked, they have the same gifts, talents, and abilities as you. The only thing that separates them from you is their intentions, how they're choosing to use. Those gifts, talents, and or abilities. So this is like a huge collective awakening of higher consciousness. But again, it's. How do you perceive your own reality? And being able to assess and evaluate how your subconscious mind is creating a reality. Also being honest about the fact that your inner child wounding and the scars and the trauma that are still within your subconscious mind has created a false reality for you. 
when you let that go, you can go into the reality that you are actually trying to manifest that brings in Six of Pentacles, your good karma, the windfall of abundance from all of the seeds that you've already planted. Yeah, awakening is here again. Perspective. Six of Wands and Judgment. Ten of Swords. When you finally see the truth about a situation from your past, some of you are just going to get clarity and confirmation that somebody, they, they know the truth about you now. And it's, it's sort of like, okay, what I'm really getting here is it's like, you kind of get your glory day because if you're dealing with people not believing you, some of you now, you're about to shine bright like a diamond, like you're the star and everybody sees it and they know it. it it's, it's, it's confirmed. But the problem here is how long will you look for validation? Again, th th this is all going back to the shadow work and the healing how the need for validation and assurance and reassurance, how it can lead you down a rabbit hole that will get you off of your divine purpose. I mean, you'll always find your way back, but how much are you doing just because you're seeking approval or validation? But that's honestly how most people are taught. That's what we're conditioned to do. So now that you're coming out of that page of swords, you're being truthful. You're being more outspoken. You're choosing now to be more selfish. Like I said, with, with your time, your effort, and your energy, the, the hangman, you're taking time out for yourself to analyze situations. Again, it's not so much that things are slow, it's just steady. And you're so used to being in survival mode and having chaos and conflict, that steady is triggering. The wheel is here with the 10 of wands. So once again, we have two tens here and wait, it's three tens out here already and the judgment card, which is card number 20. So there's a lot of, and you have like endings happening with maybe three different things in your life or three, three areas, three significant areas of your life are being drastically changed. There's the queen of swords, the queen of cups and the five of wands. If you've had conflict with a friend, a family member, an ex-lover of yours or the ex-lover of someone that you've been connected with, this is about to change drastically. Those people who are in third-party karmic situations, there's about to be a huge change. It's over. It's done. Yeah. King of Swords and the Chariot. Somebody is about to stand up for themselves and they're like, no more. Some Somebody is just, they're like, I, I can't do it anymore. Four of Pentacles, four of Swords, somebody holding on to this false reality, this facade, something that uh, keeps somebody in survival mode. This King of Swords is saying no more. This person has gained too much knowledge in a situation. I feel like there could definitely be a mask in here that has been juggling between more than one person or this person has been trying to make like a lover and a family member happy or something. Somebody is like, this. it. I can't do it. Like somebody is completely tapped out. They can't, like, I cannot do this because what is happening on a collective level is people are realizing that they have gotten into jobs and, and very significant relationships in their life due to their mindset from when they were triggered from something traumatic, from childhood, from conditioning. And as people are waking up, they're like, wait a minute, why am I with this person? All of the trauma bonds are being exposed. And people are running passionately away from anything that brings them heartache, pain, or sorrow. And they're going towards their healing. And this is leaving people out in the cold. This queen of pentacles. Five of cups. Somebody here is disappointment. Is disappointed and in regret. Because these are individuals who for a long time have been 
very practical, very grounded and stable. All of a sudden now everything is becoming imbalanced. Because other people around them are understanding the importance of them being grounded, stable, controlled, resilient, and going towards the thing that actually makes them happy. Page of Cups, Knight of Cups, the Eight of Cups, and the Emperor, and then the Six of Cups. Yeah, somebody here is leaving. These are people like leaving relationships that they got in as 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 children, you know, the the high school sweethearts are looking at each other now and they're like, wow, yeah, I I married you, I had kids with you when I didn't know who I was as a person. So you, you're going to see those huge tower moments. And, and they should be welcomed. It should be embraced. Like, there is no need to be angry or, or upset that you're going through an awakening. When you go through an awakening, you will go through a pruning season. Everything around you that is not aligned with you, it's not about if it's the good or bad, everything that's not aligned with you and your purpose, you'll be separated from it. Someone has to let go of their childhood memories. This, All of this nostalgia with these, all these planets being in retrograde, people are realizing now it's okay it's time to walk away from habits and beliefs that were formed during childhood and conditioning especially how people have been taught to love and how to go after love how to pursue and be pursued because let's face it you have a lot of amazing people in the world who are just not connecting with other amazing people why do you think that is it's because of the outdated beliefs and the conditioning there is no one size fits all. I look at every now and then you get on TikTok and everybody is giving relationship advice. Well, you have the people that will give you advice and they'll teach you how to how to date up and be a serial dater to always be looking for the next best thing. You know, everybody defines love and success differently. How do you define it? Once you know how you define it, you will align yourself with people who have the same or similar morals and values that do things from the same place of integrity as you. Because for so long, it's like one fish up, one fish down. You keep aligning yourself with people who are on a totally different page because collectively, you haven't known exactly what you wanted and you connect with other people who don't. I tell people all the time, it's just like when you're in a transition phase in your life, people say you attract what you're, you're gonna attract other people who are transitioning. Wherever you are in your journey, you're going to attract other people who are in a very similar place. So if you're in between worlds, you will attract people who are in between worlds. And sometimes you and that person, you will end up going on the same path. But you have to face the fact that oftentimes you and that part, you're going to choose divergent paths and that's okay. Just because you met at the same place does not mean you're going to go there. And that right there, to me, is the codependent energy that everyone is taught. You know, you were born into their family, you stay with your family. Those are your parents. They have to automatically be the most amazing people. That's your sibling. They should be your best friend. Those things don't hold true when you get into the real world and you become awakened, aware, and conscious to see that all family isn't good to you. All family isn't aligned with your purpose. You know, and when you recognize that, hey, I don't have to be around those people. I don't have to work that job or whatever. That's when your life will change. But I feel like a lot of people are, they're wanting changes, but you don't want to accept the changes that come along with the change that you're making because that means that most likely you're going to lose everything that you that you have that you've already built up but why does it matter when it's a burden anyway and it's time for you to have a renewal it's time for you to be restored and redeemed and to have a renewal and to have love why do you still want to hold on to the baggage? 
you don't have the capacity for the baggage that's hiding out in your subconscious mind. It's sort of like, um, like storage. You're going to have to put their subconscious stuff on an external hard drive somewhere and, and put it on the shelf, put it on the jump drive somewhere. You can plug it in when you want to, but you can't operate. Your system doesn't need to operate off of a subconscious mind that is full of drama, obstacles, challenges, trauma, and tragedy. Shut the shut the whole system down and start over. But you know how that goes. But I don't I don't want to lose the memories. I don't want to. But they're not good memories. I talk about like when you get rid of people out of your life. A lot of times, and I'm guilty of it. I'll I'll be the first. I haven't even done it fully myself. You'll still hold on to the pictures, the text messages. The emails. And then when those people call or text you every Mercury retrograde, what do they do? They send you an old picture. Remember that time? You stay connected to the past by constantly reflecting, remembering, and, and revisiting the past.